Alright everybody, so we're back here again, and where we left off we just accessed the main terminal and shut down these force fields so that we could go fight these enemies. So let's just get ahead and go through that and we'll level up pretty soon. Oh, and I, um, if I recall from last time, I had begun talking about how I got into Star Wars and why I chose to do Knights of the Old Republic. Alright, so, um... Star Wars, I was in like the third grade, I don't know what age that was, but I didn't remember my friend showed me episode 3, and I I never got to, I didn't watch all of it at first, but I watched like the first, to the, basically to the part where the Order 66 is executed, and I really liked the movie, so I, I went and I checked out at the original trilogy when it would come out on Spike TV. And then I, after that, after I had watched all the movies with my dad, I um, I got into the expanded universe where, if you didn't watch the last video, I'll just explain it again. It's basically several authors got together to kind of expand upon the Star Wars universe, the reason why it's called the expanded universe. What they did was, they wrote stories that would like, introduce... Okay. In, or introduce new characters like Luke Skywalker's wife is Mary Jade and build further expand upon characters like Luke Skywalker but also introduce the Sith Order and how the rule of two came to be and it was from what from what I've heard there was a lot of incons inconsistencies in in the expanded universe but it was real cool reading about how Luke Skywalker and Han Solo and Leia 30 years later fight an extra galactic threat then it's used on Vaughn or how Darth Bane came to become the only Sith Lord and taken an apprentice to create the rule of two I found that really interesting I still haven't got into the comic books yet but I'm really thinking of going into that so I believe I, I, I was kinda sad whenever the expanded universe got canned but I understand why they did it because I think I mentioned this in a previous video I'm pretty sure Disney wanted freedom to be able to to do whatever they wanted they didn't want to have to stick to a certain plot so they don't form inconsistencies and honestly the new books I've heard Aftermath is pretty trash but I I listened to an abridged version of uh, Lost Stars and I really really enjoyed that and right now I'm listening to the unabridged version of Bloodlines, and that's they're they're both by the same author, Claudia Gray, and I'm pretty happy. Uh, Disney decided to bring Claudia Gray in as an author because her work so far has been pretty amazing. I've really really enjoyed what she's done so far with what she's given. Uh, Bloodlines is like a political book on. I believe, and this is, I'm not too far into it, like maybe three hours into the audiobook. So this is kind of like spoiler, spoilers if you don't want to listen to this. But um, there's two forms of government, centrist and a populist. The centrists want one big unified government where all planets have to kind of like, all the planetary governments have to fall under that government. And they want like one big leader, kind of like an emperor, but not really an emperor, more like someone to make our decisions to stop the bickering in the Senate. Because there's like, so the Senate split up into centrist and populist, and it's about 50-50. Alright, we got through here. And... Yeah, picking up some strange readings. What are you doing down there? What kind of readings? The containment fields in the mining tunnels are shutting down. You need to get out of there before they vent fuel to the surface of the asteroid through the tunnels. How much time do I have? You may be able to keep it contained until you get the turbo lift to the fuel depot, but not for much longer. I'm locking down the turbo lift to the administration section now to keep the blast from spreading. If you've got anything left to do down there, make it quick, because where you are is going to get real hot real soon. So we basically have unlimited time. Doesn't matter. 
They're not gonna let us sign this game. All right, so let me just real quick meet these enemies, and I can start talking a little bit more about the book. All right, so um, the populace kind of want planets to be to be able to govern themselves, and so. This one guy, I think his name is Rai Revan Dai or Rin Revan Dai. He um he he's like he's in charge of this cartel over there by like the system Ryloth is in. And a representative from Ryloth, I believe, comes in asking for help. To uh to ask he comes to ask the New Republic for help to put down the cartel. And so Princess Leia volunteers to go, and then a, a centrist volunteer saying that the populace should just be get to go do this by themselves. Don't have a sign in charge. Sorry about that. So at, at first, Leia thinks it's kind of like a plot for the centrist. So they kind of like want they don't want to be left out of things. So. Kind of, kind of like the head figure of the centrist, the representative, the guy everyone thinks about when they think about the centrist government or the centrist philosophy. He volunteers to go, and at, he kind of like he has a lot of relics about the. All right, let's watch this cutscene. Oh, it's a pleasure to see you alive, Master, provided my receptors are not off focus. How may I be of assistance? How do you know me? I'm not your master. Well, sir, I am a survivor of the Harbinger, just as you were, Master. With the unexpected termination of my previous master, you are the only organic which I may now serve. Who is your previous master? Answer, the captain of the Harbinger, Master. I was in transit to Telos to facilitate communications and terminate hostilities. However, we did not arrive at our intended destination. Mm. What you happened? Irritated answer. Oh, Master, it is such a long, dull story, and not terribly relevant to our current situation. Why don't you tell me anyway? Hesitant explanation. That has been the subject of considerable discussion since our arrival here, Master. Many have attempted to claim you and this unit as salvage. I was crudely interrogated concerning our brief history together on board the Harbinger, before its communications, weapons, and engines suffered the cascade failure that disabled the ship. How come I don't remember any of this? Speculation. It is possible you were incapacitated and locked in the well-shielded cargo compartment as the Harbinger was being systematically crippled, Master. Incapacitated. Verification. Yes, Master. No doubt the flurry of destruction on board the Harbinger somehow drugged you into a stupor from which you could not awaken. Most curious. Drugged? What do you mean, drugged? Placation. Merely a turn of phrase, Master. The implication that your state was due to the result of ingesting large quantities of Juma juice was unintentional. I meant to communicate only that you were somehow rendered unconscious before you were locked securely in the cargo hold. Locked? Clarification by locked. I meant sealed, Master. My vocabulator seems to be malfunctioning. But how did I get from the Harbinger to here? Recitation. Following the unusual set of coincidences that led to the cascade failure in the Harbinger's systems, we were boarded by a small freighter with unknown ID codes. It appeared that this freighter had been attacked, and the captain wanted to study it. This freighter appeared to be still spaceworthy. 
Your cargo compartment was breached, and you were taken on board the freighter shortly before the Harbinger systems began to go critical. I, too, managed to board the freighter before the Harbinger's destruction. We were most fortunate to have survived, Master. Any idea who had attacked my freighter? Evaluation. Master, I do not know. Judging from the damage, it had been attacked by a much larger vessel. And when it attempted to escape the Harbinger with you on board, it was fired on again. Addendum. It does seem odd that such a small vessel has a high probability of attracting the attention of much larger vessels. Not a welcome trait in a freighter, to be sure. What was this freighter that the Harbinger brought on board? Explanation. I believe it was a smuggler's Eben vessel Hawk. by the name of the Ebon Hawk. Speculation. As to its purpose, I do not know. Perhaps it was always its intention to play dead, then kidnap you off the Harbinger and rob me of my bounty. <sighs> bounty? Clarification. By bounty. Yeah, show sure you me your my life. life. Master. It would pain me to see you damaged in any way. That is why the arrival of this Ebon Hawk caused me considerable distress. You ain't HK-47. You're not HK-47. We're not friends. You're gonna die. Apology. My memory core cannot provide a clear answer on that point, Master. Yeah, sure Suffice it can. Suffice to say that once we arrived at this floating rock, our situation became much clearer. How so? Explanation. Despite my market value, Master, the miners were far more interested in you. It did not take long for me to ascertain the reason for this. While an HK protocol droid is a valuable piece of property, Jedi are worth much more in certain exclusive markets across the galaxy. Painful admission. I must confess to feelings of inferiority at the speculated difference between my value and the price for your capture. I was forced to remind myself it was not due to a failing of my model or function, but because you were a Jedi. How did they find out I was a Jedi? Surprised answer. Why I told them, Master. You are the exiled Jedi who served with Revan in the Mandalorian Wars, are you not? I hope all that has happened has not been the result of a miscommunication. If so, then the problem lies with the core word databases, which are notoriously spotty. Pleasantness, what are you talking about? Wait, no, that information would have been core word databases only Jedi Indignant archives. Indignant exclamation. Master, I am only a protocol droid, but it is part of my function to know such information and relay it to any interested parties in the interests of terminating any potential hostiles. Potential hostiles? Quick clarification. Apparently my vocabulator has suffered some damage, Master. I meant terminating any potential hostilities. So what happened to the miners when we arrived? Answer. All that has happened has been because they believe you to be a Jedi Master. They debated what to do with you as you lay unconscious in the medical bay. One group seemed intent on selling you as property. The other group opposed this. Then what happened? Three standard hours after the division between the miners became apparent, Accidents began to occur throughout the facility, a result of improper maintenance, I believe. These accidents coincided with the degradation of the mining droid behavioral cores. Crude models are prone to such failures, resulting in murderous rampages. The mortality rate of organics in the facility rose quickly. So what happened to the rest of the miners? Many miners began to join you in the medical bay as a cascade of flawlessly timed detonations occurred in isolated gas pockets in the lower levels of the facility. The explosions herded the miners into emergency sections of the station quickly and efficiently, cutting them off from communications and facility control. But sadly enough, not the ventilation systems. 
That's hardly enough. What do you mean? You see, the explosions had damaged specific sections of this facility's ventilation systems, causing a slow, lethal buildup of toxic fumes in the dormitory level. Are there any left alive? Answer. I do not know, Master. Ironically enough, any miner that fled to the dormitory level to protect themselves from the droids and the explosions would find themselves in a gas-filled death trap. Then I need to get in there and rescue them. It is unlikely any miners remain alive. As but we gotta said, try. We have to. The dormitory has been cut off from the rest of the facility, as has the hangar bay. There is no escape. Can we try to contact them via the comm link? Apology. Unfortunately, communication with the dormitory section is severed, Master. It is perhaps for the best, especially if any other accidents have occurred in that section. If that were the case, the severed comm link would have spared us the satisfaction of hearing the miners' screams as they lived out their last moments in fear and terror. There must be another way. Theory, you could walk across the surface of the asteroid to the dormitory airlock, but such a route would be extremely hazardous, and I do not wish to see you damaged. Those miners could be hurt or in danger. We need to make sure they're alright. Warning, Master. Continued exploration of this facility may place you in unnecessary danger. I encourage you to return to the medical bay and wait for retrieval from a vessel that is no doubt on the way, even as we can no, screw this you. pointless conversation. I'm gonna find those miners and you're gonna help me. Weary resignation. Very well, master. But there is very little that I can do. You see, the airlock is sealed by a code. Alright, so I'd rather get the code to the airlock. Correction. Oh, I already possess the code, Master, but I am afraid that it will do you no good. What do you mean? Condescending explanation. Master, the console governing the droid maintenance area and the airlock is voice printed, musing. In the last days of his life, the maintenance officer was quite careful about voice protocols bordering on paranoid obsession. Conjecture. I suspect once he realized something was wrong in the facility, he voice locked the droid bay functions. A prudent measure, but in the end, he met the same fate as the rest of the organics. Voice printed? Explanation. Yes, Master. Many consoles have voice recognition sensors built into their systems so that only selected individuals can unlock them. But you do know the code. Condescending explanation. Oh, yes, Master. The code is Maintenance Control Voice Print ID R1B5. But unless the maintenance officer speaks the code, it is useless. Then how can I bypass you the voice screen? Sir, Master, you cannot. You are trapped here just as I am. There is nothing to do except patiently wait for whatever the future has in store for us. Never mind, then I'll be going now. Alright, yeah, that was enough dialogue. Let's take all of his stuff. So we're gonna have to find a way to get the voice print. Alright. So, where was I? Okay. Yeah, Leia, centrist, populist. Alright, so, they when they meet Rin Revan, he kind of like kidnaps Leia or tries to bribe her. And then the guy with the protocol droids help. I finished work on the Sonic Imprint sensors. I saw them in the original, in the mining droids, but I'm locking up the original here to prevent the other miners from using its ability to record and playback voices. To override the Joyce voice print protocols. Let's check our journal. With the sonic imprint sensor, you might be able to record pieces of the maintenance office officer's voice from hollow logs and use them to open the airlock door. Alright, so they they go on this mission. 
and then they, after being betrayed by Rin Revan, they. Shut up. They they come back to the Senate and appeal to continue on their investigation. Cause Leia's kind of like real tired of all the bickering in the Senate, so she um she just wants to be able to continue her investigation before she resigns as a senator. Let's just heal up. So now I have to do Okay, we'll, we'll level up after this. Yeah, let's just level up now. Level up. Skills. Let's get... Treat. Let's get security. Feats. Empathy is a good one. Powers. <sighs> Dominate mine is gonna be what I want later. Uh, energy resistance. Energy resistance. And force aura. Level up again. Attributes. You definitely want intelligence, skills, let's get awareness and treat injury, powers, so it's requirements for dominate mind, level 6, throw a lightsaber, accept, so we're level 4 right now, Let's do this lightsaber. Don't have a lightsaber. I'm so stupid. Okay, so they go. They seem like they're friends. Ooh. These look mean, big, and tough. So we still have access to the force. This should be easy enough. We'll just attack it. So they go they seem like they're like they're kinda getting together now, even though he's kinda like a supporter of the old empire. He agrees that Palpatine was a bad leader. But he says the type of government that they have would be a good government. So, but Leia kind of like gets over it because she sees how he's not that bad of a guy. Like he just wants to make the uh, the New Republic a better place. And then another senator calls in a vote to to create something to replace the Chancellor with something called a first senator, where they basically dominate the um, the Senate. And this, this is, you know what, let's log out, because I'm about to save this anyway. Alright, so let me just finish my discussion. This is like a nightmare for the populace, because this is exactly what they're trying to avoid. And they have a vote. Well, it's obvious the populace vote no, the centrists vote yes, but then all the neutral planets vote yes also. So now, they're going to have a vote for who's going to be the first senator. And the populace are freaking out, but then they realize, hey, if we get a populace in as a first senator, then all these centrist ideas that they want to be enacted are going to be nullified, and we can create a populist government. So they all decide we're going to... They decide that Leia is going to be the one running for president, and that's where I'm currently at in the audiobook. Maybe as I listen to more, I'll update. What do I want to talk? 
I'll probably talk about some more Star Wars stuff next time and what my future on why I didn't record Knights of the Old Republic first and instead record Knights of the Old Republic 2. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, if you enjoyed the content, like the video. And if you want more content like this, subscribe. You can go check out my playlist. I'll leave a description to the restored content mod below and a description to Knights of the Old Republic. Thanks and have a nice day.